investigate personhood in both the present and the past. Case studies from ethnography and archaeology suggest recurring links between the granting of personhood and the mortuary practices. Anomalous mortuary treatments of views of corpus and inclusion from exclusion from formal burial may indicate a full or partial denial of personhood to the dead. Ethnographic research has also addressed the concept of social birth, which takes place when the individual are given a complete or partial social membership and can be entitled to a formal burial right after death. Social birth <coughs> not, may not coincide with biological birth, thereby determining as cases of delayed personhood. Mortuary rituals or a form of disposal involving embryos, fetuses, stillbirths, and young children can offer insights into past conceptions of child personhood and prenatal life. Anthropological research shows that individuals are often, but not universally, considered non-persons or incomplete persons. Therefore, they are frequently granted only minimal funerary rights, if any. In many contemporary Western societies, however, there is a growing tendency to grant personhood to stillbirth and fetuses with sophisticated form of remembrances for these individuals being created anew. Funerary rights for inference can also be cited insights to power dynamics that go beyond the emotional responses in infant deaths. In many societies worldwide, the construction of personhood and the granting of social significance to children are crucial political acts. In the US, for example, diverging ideals on social status of embryos and fetuses has caused intense debates concerning abortion, fetal personhood, and the role of religion, bodily autonomy, and maternal rights in society. 